Hi, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Words of Pearls. And once again, this is Flo Changajita. And we're doing today on Words of Pearls, we're doing virtue. So let me ask you a question. Do you, uh, how do you know yourself? Do you know yourself by intellectual knowledge? Or who do you think you are when you're in pure silence? How do you see yourself in the pure silence of time when there is no sounds around you, nothing else? Who do you see or envision yourself to be? Or are you thinking of yourself with your intellect? So, virtue. What is virtue? Virtue is considered to be moral excellence, is it not? Well, within that, we ought to walk in. When you think about being morally excellent, how many times we can do things, we can do things slipshod, we can do things that we know isn't right. However, you know, it's like you can run a stop sign simply because it's late night, even though there may be no cameras around, or you can run the red light and it's late night, even though there are no cameras around and there are no other vehicles on the street. However, morally, don't you think that you're there to uphold the laws of the land, right? So you know that when the light is red, you ought to stop unless your life is in danger. But if you're the only person on the street in a vehicle and you go through the light simply because there's no one around, there are no eyes on you and you, you, you figure that you could do that. Well, you know, we ought to think about our virtue, how we live our lives, right? And virtue embodies ethics, excellence, faith, generosity, goodness, kindness, rectitude, hope, fortitude, tenacity, justice, respectability, trustworthiness, and love. See, these are all the things that virtue embodies that helps us to live our lives right. Because when you think about this, when we have virtue, then we walk in integrity. When we have virtue, then we walk with dignity, right? Because we're upholding ourselves to a higher standard. And we're not doing something because of someone, we're doing it simply because it's who we are. And so even if there aren't eyes upon us, we'll do the same. You know, as a Christian, I always said, and this was prior to me really thinking about this, but I always used to say, and those who know me very well know that I always say this, I am a Christian, and as a Christian, I always said the Christian I am in my closet is the Christian I am. And what that means is that it's not who I am living or presenting myself to the world, to people at work, you know, or uh, in my home even, not even to my own family, but I usually think of who am I in the quiet time? Who am I when my family are not around, you know, and no one else is in the house. And it's just me, just me, just me and God, just me. Who am I then? Do I do things differently than when my family is not there? You know, I heard Sister Pollyanna Barnes last week from Christian, she came to Christian Fellowship um, SDA and she preached a message, uh, which I did uh, take that excerpt from her message and post it on Facebook. And she said, like, do you honor your spouse behind their backs? And, you know, a lot of people can say, we will talk good in front of our spouses, but behind their backs, if they ever do anything, you know, with maybe the family or 
you know, friends or even strangers. You know, I remember once I went to a, a beauty shop and this lady was there and she was talking about her spouse and, oh, he's, you know, oh, she's just with him because he's got money and he funds everything. Actually, the, the, the beauty parlor was, he had purchased it for her. And he took very care of her, very good care of her, dressed well and everything. And she, she'd have conversations. She said she'd even talk about him while he's sleeping. Well, one thing I've learned is that if a person is next to you sleeping, you know they can still hear you, right? The, medically, the hearing is the last thing to go, they always say. So, you know, folks can hear you in their dreams. I remember I was sleeping one day and I was hearing my mom and my uncle who were both alive at the time and I could hear them. I didn't realize it was them, but what they were saying, I was dreaming about that. And, you know, when I woke up and I was telling my mom, she said, oh, that's the conversation they were having. So we do hear even when we're sleeping. So, you know, he eventually left her and, she never honored him behind his back. She, you know, so we have to not just, and that made me think, not just honor someone to think of honoring someone, but we need to honor ourselves when there's no one around. And that's what virtue does for us. Virtue allows us to be kind and to be good to others just by you know, sensing people's needs. And if we can help in any way, whether it's a kind word or a, a, a deed, an action, you know, we can do that without thinking that I have to be paid for it or something, but just to know that I'm doing this by virtue, by sheer virtue of who I am, I am doing this by sheer virtue of who I am. And so, you know, when we, uh, we, we, we can embrace our creativity, you know, we can, uh, uh, we can speak words of wisdom to others, words that can soothe, words that can calm, words that can encourage, words that can build up, right, by sheer virtue. And we can also do and in love, move in love speak in love, be kind in love. And even if we have to be stern, even if we have to be firm, we can be firm in love. You know, that sometimes, you know, folks speak to their children, and, you know, as parents, we, we'll have to know how to discipline our children even in love so that they do not become bitter abusers. Because when we mistreat our children, when they become adults, that treatment that they got, that they can interpret it to be not love and, and then become an abuser or, 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 or even an accuser, right, of parents. So, you know, we ought to walk in virtue of who we are, whose we are, who created us. Uh, our God is a, oh my goodness. So let me share a scripture with you for today. And that scripture is 2 Peter 1 and 5, which says, for this reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with what? Virtue. We must supplement our faith with virtue. And with virtue, we supplement virtue with knowledge. So we have to know, uh, in order for our faith to be executed, we need virtue. But we don't just need virtue alone. We need the knowledge of exactly what to do. And when I think of the embodiment of virtue, I think of her as a she, okay? All right now. So that virtue, she is so true. She is pure. The Bible said, whatever things are lovely and good and kind, all those things, if there be any virtue, think on them. And so virtue embodies excellence, that we do things in excellence, not say, oh, I'm a, I do things in excellence. We don't have to say it. 
just do it in excess. See, the thing about it is when we don't talk about it, but we be about it as it's said, when we do what we're supposed to do, others will see it and know, wow, that is a work of excellence because we recognize, we know what excellence is. Okay, we don't have to go to school to know what excellence is. We know what it is, right? And to be ethical, to, to have integrity, to walk in dignity. You know, young ladies, hold your head up and know that you're priceless commodities. And young men, you need to know this. So that when you're aware of who you are, and whose you are, you live life differently. And so you've got to embrace that the God who created you is a God of excellence. His son is excellent. His spirit is excellent. And he has placed within us an excellent spirit. And so in, 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 in walking in excellence. And when we, when we do that, we can exercise our faith and be, be the generous people that we ought to be, uh, uh, do things with goodness and kind, be kind, right? And, and just live life in, in, in its all that it's supposed to be because God does want us to see his goodness in the land of the living and let us, live that life virtuously. Let us just embrace virtue so that we can walk in moral excellence. Well, I pray you have a wonderful day and uh, rest of the day, because it's now the day is over, night is drawing nigh, shadows of the evening seals across the sky. I pray that you'll have sweet sleep because God does give his beloved sweet sleep. And I pray that you have an enjoyable rest of the weekend and a wonderful week to come. And may the face of God continues to shine upon you. You know, when his face shines upon you, he gives you peace. The love that comes, radiates from him, comes to you. And oh, when you're enveloped in all of that goodness, that love, whoo. It just really makes you want to live a virtuous life and walk in moral excellence. So with that, have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Know that I do love you and know that God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit loves you even more. And if you know anyone who would like to see this video, but they're not on Facebook, then how about going to my YouTube page, Flo, F-L-O, Changajita, and share that with someone. The good thing about sharing is we never know who will need a message, but there is always a message to share with someone and to encourage someone along the way. We are, after all, our brothers and our sisters keepers. We were never meant to be alone. So share a word, be kind. Let us love one another by being kind to one another. Have a great weekend.